Okay, our next guest, uh, Outreach for Animals, Tim Harrison, is a great friend to the Rob Dennis Show. And when I talk about <clears throat> Tim Harrison, I always mention he was there along with Jack uh, Hanna during the uh, Zanesville shooting, which should have never happened. They should have never had all those animals to begin with. And thanks to Tim, I believe in 2011 he got with the governor. All the other states had the law, and we didn't. You can no longer own exotic animals in the state of Ohio, which is the way it always should have been. So thanks to our governor and Tim Harrison, that was taken care of. I remember when the news covered uh, them taking an alligator out of a basement in um, right. uh, Huber Heights. So that. you can't do that anymore. So welcome a great friend to the show, everybody, Tim Harrison. Hey, uh, ho. How you doing, Skinny? No, I'm doing okay. 193 pounds. <laughs> Boy, you just lost all kind of weight. Last time you was here, he was 100, 195 pounds. You lost two pounds on <laughs> me. Pounds. No, I lost a little bit of weight. I've been traveling around the country quite a bit. Well, there's always something exciting going on. And when I talk about the show, and I always talk about some of my favorite guests, of which you are included, I mention what great work you have do are doing with these exotic animals, and you, along with the governor, got this law passed, which should have always been in place anyway, and it Absolutely. wasn't. Yep. And when I saw, I, of course, whenever I see some weird thing, like uh, I'll see a clip on a show where uh, families are going to buy snakes for their kids, and I see these little documentaries and everything. It's why, boy, if Tim Harrison sees this, he's going to have a fit <laughs> that uh, people just aren't, aren't thinking. So we always know with, uh, with Tim Harrison, there's something new going on, something exciting. So what's going on, Tim? Well, brought you a story of a great group. Peter Emily uh, International Veterinary and Dental Group gets together, foundation, travels around the country and the world. They're dentists, both human and animal dentists. They travel around free of charge and work on dangerous wild animals that are in captivity because most of bears and cats end up breaking their teeth or damaging their jaws in captivity. And a lot of times the training methods they use for teaching tigers and lions and circuses is used with a softball bat, whap, upside the head. So they cracks them, cracks their teeth. And after a period of time when they get older in captivity in some of the sanctuaries and retirement facilities we take them to, mm -hmm. they end up breaking. <coughs> what I have here is to show you one of the bears that we had here in the state of Ohio. If you want to go with the first picture. Okay. First picture is this. This is near the Rankin House which is run Ripley, Ohio. When the, that's where the, uh, the Underground Railroad came when they started bringing the slaves across the Ohio River. It was right up the road, right up the, the hill on there, and everybody looked down and saw these two bears in this corn crib for 22 years. They lived in this corn crib and walked in a circle. Now, the owner, as you can see here, he didn't like police, he didn't like the government, and he didn't like anybody who was an animal activist. Well, I was all three of them, but we made friends. <laughs> and we were able to say, you know, Rob, I'm a you, human you slash have, animal you advocate. You that ability, yes. As you saw in the documentary, The Elephant in the Living yes. Room, I know how to work and help the people out, too. So we were able to get these bears out. Go to the next one here. And we were able to coax them out without darting. That's what we're known for, working, moving animals. We worked a lot with uh, Temple Grandin, who is a well-known individual, that, uh, an autistic woman who uh, works with animals and is able to move them without uh, having to harm them. We were able to move the, this bear out. This is Mamie. And we'll continue Mamie's story. Go to the next picture. We were able to load her up for a six-hour trip to Albion, Indiana, to Black Pine Animal Sanctuary. Oh, okay. So once we got to Black Pine Animal Sanctuary, this is what happened to her. We ended up getting there and finding out that she had had her teeth broken out with a pair of pliers oh. by either the owner or the dealer who sold it to the owner and he had ripped her claws out with the same pliers when she was younger so she had no claws and allegedly no teeth but once the team got together these are my heroes these are god sent people right. they're, they're doing this out of the goodness of their heart and they're from all over the country dallas new york everywhere they get together and fly around the united states and the world to help these animals and nobody else will help the forgotten animals as we know rob nobody cares about the tigers in ohio but they care about the ones in india yeah. We ended up, uh, she ended up having six, uh, as we'll show the next picture here, she ended up with six uh, root canals and the rest of her teeth were pulled, as you can see in the picture there. And she was able to make her life a lot easier because, as you know, all know with your dental teeth, anybody have any problem with your, with your teeth, it works on your whole body. You get sick, your body gets sick and everything else. So she was able, we were able to help her out and she's doing great now. She's doing fantastic. She's able to eat well now. And it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful retirement facility for these. I got 21 sanctuaries, as you know, Rob, across the country. It takes bears, primates, mm -hmm. big cats, everybody. And Black Pine is A+. Plus. They're a great group. If you go to the next one, we also had a leopard. We had 14 big cats, bears uh, that we worked on that day. This is a leopard. 
This leopard had its tooth totally broken out because it would attack the side of the cage because it was not happy being in a cage, and I can't blame him. And he was in a small steel cage area before he came to this uh, Black Pine Animal Sanctuary. We were able to get him there. And they are doing x-rays here. Uh, now, if you go see this uh, leopard, it's not mad. It's not upset. And as you know, if you have a toothache, I guess you'd be a little upset, too. Yeah. So now the tooth is taken care of. Uh, the cat's doing a lot better. Super. I want to go to the next picture here, too. Uh, this right here is the, is the individuals with their jacket. Each one of those badges you see on there is from different parts of the world where they went to these sanctuaries or they went to these AZA zoos, like the Columbus Zoo and places like that, and worked on these animals. So if you ever get a chance to check, get on your computer, check out that Peter Emily uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, International Veterinarian Dental Foundation and help them out. They need all the help they can get. If you go to the next picture, please. Now, we're going to skip back local here, Rob. I always have stories. You know, I was the one that took that, mm -hmm. you know, eight foot alligator out right. of the basement in Huber Heights. Huber had the worst dental. Uh, I've ne I've never seen an alligator like that. Oh. And neither has any veterinarian in the world has seen an alligator as bad as that alligator was in our Huber Heights, Ohio. And shouldn't have been there to begin should with. never been there in the first place. I mean, you know, I've been fighting for 20 years. I uh, use yeah. common sense, but common sense isn't that common anymore. But right over here, as you see, this is uh, Sheila Marquez, one of my heroes. She's an animal investigator here in the state of, Mago or state of Ohio, Montgomery County. These people came home to a brand new home. They didn't realize, and then when they went inside her, somebody had moved out. They went in to move in. A woman moves around something, and she sees a snake in, a, in their house. They just moved in. Mm -hmm. So she calls police. She calls the animal control. Sheila goes out to investigate, looks at it. Mm -hmm. So we get a call to Outreach for Animals. We show up. We're police officers, firefighters, and paramedics retired. And we're also, as you'll see on the documentary, The Elephant in the Living Room, lots of emergency room doctors from around the country, and a lot of veterinarians now working with us. So I call us out, we come out to check it out. We find three right off the bat, pythons, <laughs> and whatever it was, the individual moved out and left their snakes. So uh, we don't know if we're going to find any more, but that's what we found at that time. Next picture. This is uh, what we just happened. This is a six-foot alligator. It was just, just, just happened two weeks ago. Six-foot alligator taken out of a bathroom here locally in the Dayton area. Uh, we're, the young woman you see in front of me here, I'm very proud of her. I, I, I'm a mentor of different individuals around the world now that are stepping up and trying to do what we're doing, what I'm trying to do, be a human-slash-animal advocate. She's from uh, Australia, uh, University of Brisbane. They sent her over to attempt to get, a, get some footage mm -hmm. for a potential documentary that they want to do, and she came over, and she, her, the footage she took in the four, day, four days she was with me, she sent back, and they're doing a documentary. Now they're coming back here in November, then they're going to Africa to go with some poacher, anti-poaching wow. people I work with, which we'll talk about in a minute, and back to uh, Indonesia with Barute Gladicus with the orangutans who I worked with. So she's going to get the whole, that's Nikite Thakwe, and she helped with the alligator. She was just stunned, because in Australia, they don't do this. You can't touch the, you can't touch the uh, plants over there because mm -hmm. they have a healthy respect. We yeah. have no respect in the United States for yeah. these animals because we're Gator Boys, we're Steve Irwin, we're all these shows where everything is harassed and, and abused. So she's coming back to finish the, finish the documentary, and we're pretty excited about that. But you was talking about earlier about the, uh, let's, go, let's go to the last one. I need, this is something I'm very proud of. Uh, they selected me as the first North American uh, supporter of the Say No, which is the International Rotary. And it's through a, a band called Be Sure Is, which is very popular in Europe. They have the Royals, they have Seal, they have uh, Queen, they have all the groups all have backed it up. And I was the first North American to be able to sign this poster in North America, and they're inviting me over in September to speak with Jane Goodall and David Attenborough wow. about anti-poaching. Now, Goodall. we're talking about we moved a white rhino from a ranch in Texas. So they're over there we're dealing with rhinos over here. We got them in Texas. We got, you know, 3,400 tigers in Texas, you know, permitted as pets. And as we all know, they're not true tigers. They're American tigers. And that's another documentary I just finished called American Tiger, a documentary with Chris Coppoletto, who was, uh, does the, the, the John Daly, or the John Stewart show. Mm -hmm. So he heard me say that on the Fox News and on Nightline. He said, what is this American Tiger thing? So well, these are mutts. They're a mixture of Siberian Bengal. They ain't going nowhere. So we have 3,400, and in, in, in just in Texas, we had over 1,000 in Ohio, as you know. Yep. We moved over 900 out of, of our state to sanctuaries. So people got to remember, we have more tigers here in the United States than we need to take care of. Let's don't forget these guys. So I'm very proud to be hooked up with this group. And uh, Duke Ingram is the guy from the band who is uh, really pushing. He's actually written a song about me. It's going to be coming out over in Europe. I don't know if it's ever going to play. I'll play it here on your, on okay. if it comes over. But it's one of those situations where it's, we have to step up and do something. 
and we're right on the front line and it's sadly it has to be police officers firefighters and paramedics because we are the first ones on the scene when a woman gets her face ripped off by a chimpanzee yep. it, can, it ain't the zoo and it ain't jack Hanna. and the first time something happens you know when the uh, san francisco zoo a tiger gets there and kills a boy seriously injures too we all remember that it was two police officers called off the street that had to handle that tiger as the zoo people hid in the cafeteria called 911 so we're pushing for laws to protect public safety and the public so that's what we're doing right now well people's got to use common sense <clears throat> i just saw yesterday the clip of the woman who went over two barriers and the white polar bear grabbed her leg oh yes yeah you've seen that clip? yeah yeah that's and i thought of you <laughs> today yeah earlier today yeah watching the animal planet yep. a elephant had an abscess behind the tusk mm -hmm. and what they had to go through to unfortunately remove the tusk once they got the tusk out they could get to the source of infection now they say the animal is doing great she's really happy oh, yeah. and she loves people yeah. but you know things happen but that that was a necessary thing oh yeah they you had know, to do take that care one. of that but you gotta remember rob people are doing this because they see it on some monkey see monkey do thing everybody knows 101 dalmatians right whenever that movie comes oh, out yeah. millions of people buy dalmatian cubs and they end up in humane society the very next month so you know finding nemo is a perfect example the whole movie, Finding Nemo, says, don't put me in an aquarium. There you go. In America, we have to put it in. It turned into be about a $10 billion a year industry selling clownfish. So the whole thing is America will do exactly what they're shown on TV. Just imagine Jackass, the show Jackass. Remember when you had the, the doctor on with yeah. you that one time? He even said it. When the show Jackass comes out, everybody goes out and imitates the exact same thing yeah. that they saw on TV. And every paramedic knows that. So we have to be able to understand that TV is like, like my friend, uh, Mr. Rogers, who I very, very a lot of respect for, said it perfectly. That's the most holy of all areas is between your children and the TV. Mm -hmm. So we have to remember that. Yeah. Always some going on with Tim Harris. Oh, yeah. Always yeah. love to hey, have thanks, you here. Bro. And you know you're always welcome back to talk about anything. I appreciate it. Because you said you were fortunate that they were involved. I think they're fortunate to have you involved with them I don't because know. <laughs> you have quite a reputation and it's always with love and respect and your and your ability to want to help these animals and we need more people like you to, well to there, take you, care we're here we're here just yeah. do it yeah just, just do, do it. it don't stay on the fence do right. it do yeah. what's right exactly just do it yeah. you're right tim harrison everybody Thank you.